Hi guys, it's uh, 5 in the morning and uh, as you can hear, probably hear from my voice, I have uh, uh, a bit of a cold and uh, I said why not share a little of my pain with you. So uh, that is why I, I said I'm going to do this video right now while I'm still uh, okay to speak. Um, and what you are see seeing in front of you is actually uh, fully uh, disassembled uh, Huben K1. Uh, Huben K1 is an extremely, extremely well made air gun. Uh, I cannot say how much I was surprised once I started to take this gun apart. It's uh, okay, uh, or uh, let's say good. When you when you have it in your hands assembled and you say okay everything is made made well everything works perfectly, but once you take it apart then you can truly appreciate how well this gun is uh, built and designed. Uh, so I yesterday I disassembled it and I studied all the parts and uh, uh, I'm going to tell you how it works actually hopefully. <laughs> okay so. Uh, I don't want this video to be too long, so I will skip some of the parts, some of the obvious parts that it's obvious uh, what they are for, what they do. Uh, okay, so I will just start, uh, obviously I will put the stock away. Uh, this is the shroud. The shroud is actually, I right now it's empty, but otherwise it's filled with these baffles. these baffles and these washers so spacers back actually uh, this is what reduces the noise plus those little holes on its end okay I won't get into details about that and that is the second part of the shroud in the middle uh, between the front and the back uh, rest for the cylinder and the barrel. This is the front one and this is the back one. Sorry, vice versa. Uh, titanium air cylinder. This is the unregulated side, so the, the high volume side. And this is the regulated side. This actually goes into uh, over here, so this is our main part, and it goes like this, and you just rotate it uh, like this. Uh, okay, next up, regulator. So this is. Uh, where you put your allen key from the uh, external side, so through the stock to adjust the pressure. I didn't fully disassemble the regulator, I could put this out but I didn't see any need because I assume it's more or less the standard regulator with an exception that it has an option to uh, uh, make settings from the external side. So This is basically just thread it onto the uh, the high volume, so the unregulated side, and the other side is the regulated area. Uh, okay, this is uh, an assembly for the barrel. So over here, the barrel is threaded in. And then when when it's threaded in, you use these four, uh, these three uh, screws, so this one, this one, and this one, to adjust it so it's properly aligned with the magazine. So I'm just going to put the barrel away. So in my opinion, the only reason why Huben is not long range accurate is because of the barrel. Because the barrel is a standard uh, air gun barrel which doesn't have a fast enough twist rate to uh, to be able to um, to be able to uh, stabilize the the longer heavier projectiles uh, 
that is uh, why I, I will probably replace this barrel probably with uh, uh, 22 LR barrel since that barrel is made for slugs or uh, that I, I want to use in this gun and uh, also the power is similar to the 22 LR uh, so yeah um, so over here we have the magazine as you see and you can see that there's actually a ball bearing for the magazine and on the top side is a, a catch this catches the uh, Let's just let me put this together. Catches the magazine magazine when when it's aligned to the correct position. So when you rotate it, it clicks in. Okay, I'll just put this apart. Uh, okay. From here on, we can go to. Okay, obviously on that side. We have the filter for the uh, inlet of the air. So this is what they showed in the video that, uh, not in the video, probably just on their web page, that you can use any kind of cloth as a filter. There's just some sort of paper stuffed in right now. So this goes to the end of the tube. Like this. Uh, okay, this is just a cheek piece, goes on the barrel. I noticed that uh, the, uh, the, the first, well, not the first batch, but the, the guns that are um, assembled now are a little different than the final prototypes. Uh, the assembly is a little different. I noticed that uh, for example, on my shroud, I got holes all around at the end of the shroud, uh, and uh, on the some of the earlier versions, uh, actually there were holes a little towards the back of the shroud and only on the top of it. So this is one of the changes I noticed. I also noticed that uh, shroud used to be uh, there was used to be only one shroud going through both of this. Uh, carriers so basically it's like this so right now you have the hole only big enough to put in the about 12 millimeter a little over 12 millimeter barrel through through the both of these carriers and uh, 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 before I believe that shroud went through the first one and up to the uh, rear one, through the front one and uh, up to the rear one, and uh, they changed that. Uh, I like this design because it actually holds directly the barrel in place. So uh, that's a little bit different also from the uh, fi uh, final prototype, as they call it. Um, Okay, just uh, let me check what's what's interesting also. So uh, I will go just briefly through the uh, knob that is used for setting the power. So this is the knob, and this attaches. It has a uh, on the back side. It has uh, this round piece with the dance, and in this dance, there's a. Uh, uh, bo uh, uh, ball bearing uh, uh, to to enable you to have clicks, so it's uh, you can set it uh, with the clicks. Uh, trigger assembly. I won't go into that. Uh, so basically, I can just skip to the operation of the of the Huben itself because it is very very interesting. I have everything that has to do with the with the operation on this side. So I'll just zoom in. I'll, I will try to show everything. Perhaps it's, it's better to get it closer to the camera. Okay. So this is the 
main main parts or let's say the brains of the gun okay so from this side you can see what we're looking at so this is the safety this is the trigger once the, you pull this back uh, sorry front towards front so this is front this is the back of the gun once you uh, pull this towards front you trigger the gun and the gun is basically assembled from two uh, two valves so basically for operation it requires two valves one is set vertically it's in here it's not in here now I will show it to you. I put it out and the second one is uh, horizontally it's put in through here and this is actually the main so the uh, horizontal one is the main valve that opens uh, when you fire the gun and uh, this one uh, closes the gun so basically this one is connected uh, through uh, this uh, through one longer rod so this rod is connected through uh, through this rod to your knob uh, so basically with this knob you dial in the power and basically what you're doing is determining uh, how uh, uh, how much um, at what pressure this valve closes and if you uh, dial, it, dial it in so basically if you uh, turn it clockwise uh, you are uh, shortening the time of uh, this valve being open so you are reducing the power uh, and uh, this uh, power reduction is determined by the pressure at what at which it closes so basically when you fire a shot the pressure uh, in the regulated side of the chamber drops uh, and uh, uh, this valve closes based on the pressure of the uh, regulated side so if you set this one to low pressure you get high power because it drains out the regulated side of the uh, cylinder more of course that means more air, air is let out through the barrel and you get higher power and vice versa of course uh, uh, in here there is a mechanism for it rotating the cylinder I will show that later I will go through the parts all the parts um, over here is a dent for the uh, uh, pressure gauge this is where the air is blown out uh, and uh, in here there is a seal that is not in right now uh, and over here is our trigger mechanism uh, I hope you see this okay because I'm using this LED light to illum illuminate this uh, a little bit and uh, I'm not sure how you see this uh, so basically when you uh, there's a spring missing in, in between those parts so this in here there should be a spring and basically the upper side is a sear that catches on the valve and it basically does not allow the valve to go back because if it goes back then uh, the valve is open if it's front uh, towards the front of the gun it's closed and it's keeping the uh, valve uh, closed over here you see it right now it's released so it's uh, not up it's down and uh, this is because I don't have a spring inside if I had a spring of course it would push it up and uh, this is just a sear uh, that uh, transfers uh, uh, less uh, so that the, on the trigger you have less amount of force so the trigger is not so heavy and the third part is this this is actually the trigger you can see that it moves so by pulling it forward or here going back you actually release this here and it releases this one and then the gun fires and this little small part on the top it's under a, also a flat spring this is what catches the allows the trigger to catch back in the front position after you fire so, so it works in semi-auto not in full auto this is 
uh, the, the mechanism that it catches despite you having the trigger pressed so it catches the valve closed despite the fact that you still are squeezing the trigger and still have it pressed of course this is uh, similar or the same to every semi-auto air gun or firearm for that matter um, okay so over here I showed you is a mechanism for rotating the magazine there's a, a, actually a small pin I think it's about two and a half millimeters uh, that is under the pressure of this whole area and over here uh, there is um, I will just show you this part so this is the pin this is the pin and this is uh, let's say the I'm not sure what the appropriate word in English is but it's uh, for uh, uh, determining how fast the airflow goes through this part into the pin and determining how fast this uh, uh, pin pushes out the uh, rotating lever for the magazine. And uh, this is this is what actually rotates the magazine. So this part, uh, it's put in like this. Just let me correct, uh, find the correct uh, rotation of it. It's bring it over here like this so the magazine lies like this and you can see the little pin that is pushing it forward to rotate so basically in here there's a spring pushing it back and the air when it when it's pressurized it's pushing it forward um, that is why uh, so uh, what happens after you take a shot so uh, the since the pressure is always inside it's uh, its fixed position is forward so uh, it overcomes the spring uh, uh, spring uh, force uh, spring tension because the uh, this uh, part of the the back uh, the pin is pressurized so the pressure is forcing it the pin forward and it overcomes the spring tension and uh, when you fire a shot again you you use the same effect because the pressure drops the spring overcomes the force of the pressure so it moves back it catches on the next uh, so this pin is also under spring tension it moves away so it moves back and it catches sorry catches no it was correct before yeah it catches on the next next uh, next uh, this detent and then as the pressure rises again as the regulator fills the regulated area again uh, it's uh, pressurized against and again the pressure overcomes the force of the spring and it rotates it per one uh, per, to place the magazine to to, uh, to the next uh, round so next hole so this is the mechanism and uh, if you want to rotate uh, the magazine freely you have to overcome this pressure force so you have to push this forward and uh, this part does precisely that so once you sorry just let it focus once you rise this lever there is a sorry I don't want to lose any parts because uh, I, I likely I won't be able to get a spare one likely <laughs> uh, okay so you see that once I pull up this lever I actually push this forward so this is what uh, is uh, what is fixed over here 
and it pushes this mechanism inside so enabling you to rotate the magazine okay uh, next part uh, let's start with the opening valve which is this couple of parts of course I'm not showing you everything there's still a little few parts left that I will show later so this is the main valve it actually can be in this position or in this position and the way this works so this valve goes in here and it has a seal on the other side or the other side if you go through this side but in the front over here and uh, this is what presses presses up against that seal uh, and the air is uh, so the high pressure air is always from the downside so from this side up in into into in between this part so this part that is sealing the outside of the uh, so uh, towards uh, the magazine and this side that is sealing towards the back and this is uh, I say I think a very clever design because it's actually using still using the uh, air pressure to seal itself so basically when you have pressure in here it pushes this part forward and this part back and this of course is fixed so it cannot go more apart than it is right now it can only go together um, and because of this it's uh, same time pushing this part forward and this part back uh, and uh, of course this surface is slightly bigger than this one that is why it pushes it more back than forward and this more back than forward force is actually stopped by this part so it's actually pushed against this part this is a steel part this this is probably also steel except for this is brass um, and this part is catched by the trigger or the trigger mechanism by the sear not to go back until you uh, pull the trigger and b behind this is a spring and a buffer that uh, uh, because after you pull the trigger of course this slams back and the buffer is what uh, makes the vibration and dampens the vibration a bit so this is basically it and this is the rear part with the spring and the buffer and the seal so this is the spring this is the buffer and uh, this on the bottom is a seal uh, so this is the the trigger mechanism as I shown before so just let it focus so this here is what prevents this part from going back until you pull the trigger uh, and after you pull the trigger it travels back but of course if this was the only mechanism for the for the for firing it would the, the valve would never close because once it's open it wants to stay open and uh, uh, that is uh, where we come to the closing closing mechanisms so a closing valve as I mentioned at the beginning there are two valves one is for opening the airflow and the second one is for closing okay so the second valve as I said is placed in here on the bottom of this so this is the bottom of the gun this is the bottom of the gun and uh, of course over here first is a seal where the valve uh, pushes against uh, and then we have this mechanism so this is the seal and this is the valve so here you see the valve and you can see that this valve actually has a uh, a dent over here so basically uh, it it doesn't actually uh, fully seals uh, and this of course travels outside so if you look at like this you see yeah this is just a sp these three legs are just a spacer so it uh, lies firmly on the surface and then it travels out to seal it like 
this. And because of this uh, dent, it doesn't seal completely. And we'll, we'll get to the reason why later. Uh, okay. And uh, this is spring-loaded, as you saw, as I showed you, spring-loaded. So it's uh, spring-loaded, so it uh, wants to stay open. And what you have is uh, another spring on the bottom side. So if you imagine this part is put in like this. And after that, this gets threaded and pushed on this part. I still don't want to focus. Come on. Okay. And this pushes onto this. So you got one spring that pushes over here and the second one, the red one, that pushes over there. And uh, the one that pushes, the, the red one, is actually what you are regulating when setting the power on your power uh, wheel, when you're di dialing the power. And this second spring is actually stronger. Uh, okay, so uh, what happens when you fire? So basically, when you fire, you got obviously this valve fully opened. So when it's pressurized, it's fully open. And then when the pressure drops to a certain point, uh, and of course the pressure is also pressing this valve down to be open and uh, the pressure goes around all of these parts into this part and this part has a, a, a seal so o-ring uh, on the internal part that seals on this uh, this uh, pin uh, and this is the surface area that uh, gets pushed down by the pressure in the regulated sides of the chamber. And this is what determines the force of the uh, of this all this assembly being pushed down. And uh, when you fire, this pressure drops and this force drops and it's up to this uh, tension of this spring at which point this spring will overcome the force of the whole assembly being pushed down by the pressure. And of course, uh, once you set it to one point, it will always uh, close at the same pressure. Uh, and uh, by adjusting the tension of the spring, it, that is, what, is exactly what you're doing with the dialing the uh, power wheel. You actually uh, set it to uh, close at different pressures. Okay, so let's get back to the other part. So the sorry the um, close closing valve. Uh, we'll just pull it back out. So once the valve gets closed because the pressure is uh, too low and the uh, force of the spring is bigger, so the red spring that I showed you before is bigger than the force of the pressure. It, the valve gets closed, but as soon as it gets closed, this area gets refilled by air. And uh, this side, so this, uh, this seal is actually, has actually a bigger surface than uh, the uh, surface of the, uh, the pin that I showed you before. That means that once it closes, this valve actually wants to stay closed, but because of the pressure is actually keeping it closed after it closes, not open. And that is why there is this uh, dent in this valve. Just let me focus again. The dent that we saw before. Yeah, this one, yeah, I see it. Yeah. All the, all the way through it. And uh, this dance allows that still a small amount of air is flowing through this uh, regulated side towards the uh, main valve mechanism. Uh, and because of that, it actually equalizes the pressure on both sides. And once it's equalized, of course, this valve will open again because there is no more force keeping uh, the valve uh, closed. So it's a little complex, but... Uh, 
I, I hope I understand it uh, so that. Uh, oh, sorry, I, ho I hope I explain it so you can understand it. Uh, uh, it's a little complicated. And uh, that's it for the operation of the Huben. Uh, I think that, uh, uh, at least from what they're uh, saying on their web page, the their main uh, uh, main uh, design, the main uh, feature of this design is designing this uh, closing valve because the opening valve is known to be is, is also found on the other single shot uh, rifles, uh, pump, uh, single or multiple pump uh, rifles. But the closing valve, I believe it's I believe it's patented, but I'm, I'm not sure again. Uh, since we are di on this t subject, I would like to mention that I am extremely, extremely surprised of the quality and the uh, design of this gun. Uh, all the parts are made from extremely, extremely high quality uh, materials. Of course, uh, according to its uh, needs, because some parts you want, you need to have them light. Some has to be powerful and uh, also light. Some has to be just plain steel. And uh, all the parts are manufactured extremely, extremely well. Uh, and also the design of how everything is put together is really, it's, it's very, very, very nice to put it apart because it's, everything is made to be uh, just simply put apart and uh, put back together. For example, this uh, gauge, there's actually a spring that goes into this hole and a small pin that once you put this in, you simply rotate it and you can see here there's a dent on this side, you see here? And it catches, the, the little pin uh, by the spring force catches into this and it actually holds it in place. Of course, after you pressurize it, it the pressure will hold it so it, it doesn't rotate anymore. But until you do, uh, actually that pin holds everything together. And also, if you look at this part uh, that uh, goes to the cylinder, so the regulated cylinder, all you have to do is just, uh, let me focus again. Just put it in and rotate. That's it. And you're done. It's so simple, so easy, so cleverly thought out. I, I, really, I really must uh, hand it to the Huben. And also, the, the way everything functions, it, I, I can understand now why they say that this gun does not need any service, any repair by the by the user. Of course, if something happens, you have to take it to the gun shop, and obviously. Uh, but I can understand why they claim that this will go go on forever. And really, really, hats off my hats off to the to Huben how they designed and also manufactured this. Uh, I'm I'm kind of sorry that they didn't put in a, a more appropriate barrel. They, I guess they didn't uh, spend enough enough time selecting a barrel, and they just went with a known brand like Lothar Walter. Uh, because it's typical for air guns, uh, because uh, this, I think, kind of uh, people people don't don't uh, appreciate the Huben enough because of this problem, and it's not problem with accuracy; it's problem with pellet stability. So uh, the gun shoots at close ranges very accurately, but at long ranges, the pellets start to make spirals and. Uh, and uh, become uh, uh, unstable. And um, obviously, I'm talking about uh, if I'm talking about pellets, I'm always talking about uh, correct and appropriate uh, velocities for the pellet weight because you cannot go too fast with the pellet that also makes it unstable. But even if you're shooting, for example, if you're shooting uh, any kind of kind of longer pellets like uh, Barracuda. Or which is all, probably the most accurate still in my case, but it's still uh, it's sometimes in unstable on long ranges. Or for, for example, uh, JSB Monster or JSB uh, the new JSB Beast, which are great otherwise and quite accurate, but at long ranges they are still unstable. And this is 
probably only due to twist rate because the pellets, these pellets are very very long obviously because otherwise you cannot have enough mass uh, to, to be able to get high energies at uh, safe velocities so under a um, thousand feet let's say or even 900 feet depends on the pellet weight uh, that's it I think um, I have this gun apart I will probably put it back together now just because uh, I don't want to forget <laughs> how everything is put together over uh, if I leave it apart for a longer period of time uh, I actually already have a video recorded uh, with uh, some accuracy test with uh, other pellets uh, especially JSB uh, Beast but uh, I didn't have time yet to edit so uh, you will probably see this video before you see the uh, continue of the so next part of the review with the Huben about accuracy uh, so uh, that's it uh, thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel if you like this kind of stuff so uh, if you like uh, me taking the guns apart and showing how they actually operate of course Huben is a little bit uh, different than other guns in that area but still it's probably interesting to also see other guns how they function okay guys thanks for watching bye